Good morning and thanks so much for joining in. You're watching NDTV Profit. My name is Alex Matthew and this is uh, Ask Profit. This is a show that gets you answers to all of your stock-related questions. And if you've got those questions, you can send them to us on any one of our social media platforms or indeed on the WhatsApp number that should be on your screen right now. Uh, we are going to be talking about one particular stock at the start, but uh, let me very quickly take you through what is happening with the markets right now. You have gains of about seven-tenths of a percent for the Nifty 50, uh, and you have uh, the broader markets that are doing reasonably well at this juncture. You have the mid-cap index that's uh, higher by about six-tenths of a percent. I'm looking at the 100. Uh, you also have the 150 that's uh, gaining about 0.6% or thereabouts. And you have the small cap 250 index that's up about 1% or thereabouts. And that means that the market breadth is tilted quite firmly in favor of the advances today. Of course, that's a break from what you've seen in the recent past. Among the sectors that are doing reasonably well, you have most sectors that are in the green today, led by oil and gas, which is up about 1.5%. Energy is up about 1%. So is auto and so is realty. The other sectors that are moving, you have uh, banking as a pack that's not doing too much, but it's in the green, up about four tenths of a percent. And on the, on the losing end, you had FMCG that's down a little bit, down about a percent, uh, a tenth of a percent or thereabouts. A few uh, the uh, you know updates that have come in on the input cost side, something possibly that are weighing down on a couple of these stocks. Now we are focusing on ABB India at the start today. And uh, it is because of a brokerage note that has come in. And we've got Anushi to break it down for you. Anushi, what can you tell us about this UBS report? Absolutely. So quite a field day for ABB India. The stock has sparked a new life high today. Well, this is on the back of a brokerage note that is from UBS, wherein they have increased, uh, they have retained the buy rating, increasing the price target to about 7,550, which showcases about a 26% upside if you are to compare it with yesterday's closing. A couple of reasons that they have cited out. First is the electrification and motion, which are the biggest segments, will continue to remain uh, the key growth drivers for the business going forward. Another is the ABB is now pegged as, uh, they believe that it is pegged as the best uh, play in the infrastructure space with the ramp up of their low to medium vo uh, volt electrification business. Again, currently it trails behind uh, Schneider and Cement, so there is a lot of room of growth to catch up over here. Now, Coming to the export side of the business, which currently makes up to about 10% of the mix, that is supposed to drive better margins for the business as now the focus shifts to the more premium side. So with an improvement in the margin profile for the business as well, um, this supports the premium valuations that we are currently looking at. So all these couple of factors in place are the reasons why UBS retained the buy call rating that we are seeing today. And indeed, the stock is up as much as 6% as we speak. Thank you so much uh, for breaking that down for us, Anushi. It's time to introduce our guests for today. We've got Avinash Gorakshakar, Director of Research at Profit Mart Securities, and Ayush Mehta, Technical Research Analyst at Nirmal Bank. Thank you so much to the both of you for taking the time. As always, always a pleasure having you on the program. Let's start with a conversation on ABB India. Avinash, you just heard what my colleague was pointing out. There's a UBS report uh, that is... Possibly the reason why the stock is up, but what do you make of ABB India? Should an investor consider a fresh entry at this point? Yeah, good morning, uh, Alex. Uh, I think clearly, you know, ABB is one of those franchises which has got a very well laid down marketing network, enjoys a very strong order book. And I think, uh, you know, tailwinds uh, for ABB look pretty strong. They have a very large order book and plus... Uh, you know, their product is largely de derived out of, uh, you know, growth numbers which come out of the economy. Uh, our sense is that, you know, over the next, say, one to two years, the company is very well positioned considering the kind of uh, product dominance it has got, the kind of customers it enjoys, and obviously the kind of incremental growth opportunity which is going to come to ABB. So I think despite the fact that, you know, valuations are slightly expensive, uh, if one were to take the next two years in mind and then take a, you know, kind of an investment call, then I think one could definitely, you know, uh, nimble into the stock, you know, in a small quantity and then on any decline, one could further add positions here because the high sense is earnings growth for the next two years are going to be very solid and uh, there is hardly any potential for any downside here considering that, you know, commodity prices have also softened. So, uh, basically, the company is not going to be uh, bothered on the raw metal side. 
incremental order book is going to be now the key trigger if the company gets large orders which are obviously announced then the execution of these orders is going to be very critical so i think add on declines and give a time frame of at least 2 years if you are thinking of investing a very good company but uh, i think the risk reward will come over the next 18 to 24 all right 18 so have a little bit of uh, patience is the uh, view coming in from avinash but he is also pointing out that the earnings growth looks strong Uh, let's jump straight into the questions then, and we've got quite a few that have already started pouring in. Uh, a reminder to you: if you're tuning in for the first time, you can send them to us on that WhatsApp number that's on your screen as we speak. Now, the first one that I'll take is from Samir, and he's asking about Tata Investments. Uh, you know, he's wondering whether to uh, get into this, or rather, I think he's saying that he's holding on to this. I do not know what level he's bought at. But Avinash, this is a stock that has gone up quite uh, substantially in the recent past. It's been a bit wobbly here and there, but uh, I think there's a lot of talk about that Tata Sons IPO. It's up as much as five percent today as well. What should the strategy be here? See, my guess is uh, uh, Alex. You know, most of the investment companies which have gone up have gone up dramatically, and I think normally uh, we always value investment companies at a discount to their uh, investment value which they have across all their uh, you know holdings. so my sense is that uh, tata sons you know there have been some conflicting reports that possibly some of the companies which tata sons owns you know the privately owned companies are going to go public and that is where uh, tata investments will make a significant upside because a majority of the shareholding is held by tata investments so i think you know if the investor has got at least say 12 to 18 months because uh, for all these companies to get diluted i think uh, there would be a proper process involved So I think if the investor has the next 12 to 15 months time frame in mind, he can continue to hold. Uh, I wouldn't suggest fresh buying at these levels because the stock has skyrocketed quite significantly. And I think uh, you know fresh risk reward from these levels may be a bit tough. But somebody who's holding on earlier from lower levels can continue to hold for the next 12 to 15 months. I think once the dilution of these private companies starts, which Tata Sons has got a majority holding, that is bound to benefit uh, you know Tata Investments, and that will definitely. Give a decent risk reward, so I think it's a hold from our side. Got it. All right. Uh, there's a question coming in on YouTube, and uh, I, I don't have a name. Friend of retail investors is the handle, guys. If you are writing on social media or, in fact, on the WhatsApp number, do tell us your name and ideally where you're tuning in from as well. That will help us identify you. Uh, the question is on restaurant brands Asia. Bought at levels of 111. Should it be added more at this juncture? uh burger king and popeyes outlook for the next 6 months uh, and i believe the question is for avinash i used i know i've kept you holding for a little while i'll come to you in just a bit but we're getting a lot of uh, a lot of fundamental questions uh, what's the view here on qsr and specifically on re restaurant brand asia avinash so well, alex i think uh, you know qsr business in india is expected to grow quite significantly it's a consumption theme uh, kind of uh, you know product and i think uh, in ready to eat as well as quick service kind of restaurants products are quite popular uh, you know within the younger generation in the in our country most importantly you know i think clearly uh, in the next say, couple of years the company plans to roll out a very large geographical network and i think uh, you know uh, post covid now things have normalized not only the online but dine out facility has increased significantly so i think you need to exercise a little more patience here uh there has been some competition pressure you know from many other qsr companies which are listed but i think at 100 rupees the downside looks limited and i think if the investor has at least a 12 to uh, 15 month kind of time frame he could definitely expect a decent risk reward so i think somebody who's holding on can obviously hold on but even fresh buying around 9500 could be a good bet you know in a kind of a growing sector but over the medium to long term all right uh, let me come to you now ayush with the next question sankara from chennai is asking about Axis Bank for the next six months, not too much action as we speak in the private banking space. Uh, but would you say that it's a good uh, bet for six months period? Uh, well, looking at the charts of Axis Bank, it has retraced from the higher levels of approximately eleven fifty and currently trading around one zero five zero. It has taken a good support from its two hundred day moving average, which was placed at around one zero three zero. I feel Axis Bank will show a sign of reversal. Once it crosses one zero eight zero, so one zero eight zero can be seen uh, in the next few weeks maybe. And once it once it, it crosses one zero eight zero, then we are again seeing eleven fifty on the cards. Okay, uh, one more coming your way. Uh, this is on uh, Suz Lawn, and we've got Vishal who is asking about what the target price would be for the next six months, 
And uh, while you're at it, would you also be able to provide the support level for Suzlon? So the support level for Suzlon is placed at around 35 rupees. So 35 will act as a very strong support zone as it has formed a formation of triple bottom here, plus there's a weekly uh, swing support as well. So I think Suzlon is looking good because of the support zone. Once it crosses uh, 40 on the closing basis, we can see 50 again, but 35 rupees will be a strong support zone. Once it crosses below 35, then there should be an exit from the stock. Okay. Uh, Vikas is uh, asking uh, an interesting question. Uh, so he's, first of all, he's uh, looking at a fresh investment with a two-year perspective. Which one of these two companies uh, should be considered? Avinash, the companies he's listed are Scient DLM as well as Tanla Platforms. And uh, could you give your rationale as to which you would pick between these two? I think uh, Scient looks to be much better positioned considering the fact that, you know, they have a well diversified base. Uh, they are present in the railways, defense, as well as the aerospace sectors. And my sense is that it's been a much more consistent performer as compared to Tanla. In fact, Tanla is more on the OTT side, uh, on the value added telecom services side. Uh, if you look at the performance of Scient, I think it's been a steady performer, even in, uh, you know, challenging bad times. And even as of now, I would suggest that if the investor has a 12 to 18 month time frame, because you know IT companies, uh, according to me, the growth quotient is yet not visible. So if you want to buy now, I think you will have to uh, give in some more time because all these companies are well managed, fundamentally very strong, good cash flows. But I think the growth quotient could possibly come in from the second half of FY 24, 25. So Scient, I think, would definitely uh, give a better risk reward as compared to Tanla. And I think uh, the risk will also be mitigated. I think it's a fairly, um, you know, uh, slow moving, but a more safe counter as compared to that. Okay. Uh, now, I think that this is a very interesting question. Avinash, I'm coming back to you because it's more of a strategy and portfolio question. This is a question from Martin. Martin is writing in from Musuri. Uh, he's saying that he's 24 years old. He's uh, started investing last month and he's holding shares mostly in the power sector as well as utilities and a few banks. Now he's asking, he's not named which these stocks are, but he's asking what should his strategy be in April or when the elections start because he's getting a lot of confusing signals from various places and he's a little confused with the different views being expressed. I would think that because he's so young, he's got such a long time frame, should he really be worried about what's going to happen in the next couple of months? Yeah, I think Alex, uh, I don't know what kind of stocks he has purchased, but I think if he is stuck to large cap names in the power uh, generation sector, then I think uh, he should not worry. Uh, my sense is that uh, banks also, if he's holding on to some of the PSU or the private sector banks, I think longer term, uh, both the banks as well as the power generating companies would continue to do well. And I think he's young, so there's a long runway for him to make money. Uh, he needs to exercise a lot of patience. And I think if he gives in at least two years, then I think, uh, you know, that portfolio what he holds uh, without knowing, of course, the company names can definitely do well. Uh, election will come and go. There will be volatility in the market from mid-April when the elections start. But I think once June uh, 6th happens and I think we get a conclusive result uh, and obviously, you know, markets are also expecting that after this, there could be some rate cuts coming in. Yeah. So I think the markets will continue to go up. So I think just hang on and uh, think long term. And I think uh, risk reward will definitely happen positively. So Avinash, a quick follow up to that, because we were having conversations on uh, the channel as well. And one of the views that was described in the power space is that, uh, our, uh, you know, the guest that was speaking was uh, positive on power generators that are focused more on thermal and also have a play in renewable because he expects that renewable will pick up over a period of time and also on transmission. So do you hold to that and which stocks in the power space and in banking space should you be holding at this juncture for the long term? I think in terms of power generation, I think we still continue to like Tata Power. Uh, we believe that, you know, longer term, a lot of money can be made here. Uh, secondly, I think in transmission, you know, there are many companies uh, which operate like KC International. Uh, there is REC also, which has also got a very good exposure on the power distribution side. Uh, my sense is that, you know, these are companies where the visibility of earnings is solid. Uh, you need to take at least a two year view plus year. And most importantly, as you rightly said, you know, the uh, renewable energy names, you know, the earnings growth has not yet come in. I think the narrative has played mm -hmm. out very well except for one or two companies like KPI Green, you know, which is a lone performer in the uh, solar energy market. 
uh, i would believe that you know it's better to have large thermal companies in your portfolio some good transmission companies and power distribution companies because uh, clearly i think these are more matured players and obviously as time goes forward if they have a combination of renewable and green energy that would add to their revenue and bottom lines um, ayush coming to you on the next one jay krishnan for uh, from uh, kori code is asking about gmr infra is bought at levels of 94 for the medium term is wondering whether ex exit at this juncture and shift to something like an irfc uh, which by the way has been buzzing uh, viewers it's been up and about in the past few sessions uh, ayush what's the view so i will recommend to hold it with the trading stop loss because jma infra the chart is positive it has uh, shown good reversal from the sunday day moving average and can be stuck between this 20 so once it uh, gives a closing below 80 then we should exit then the person should exit from here and then we should definitely look for options such as irf is definitely performing well once it crosses 150 i feel there's a new target coming up which, uh, which is going to be around 165 Got it. All right. On that note, we have to slip into a very quick break. Avinash and Ayush, do stay with us, and viewers will be back on the other side to take more of your questions. So do stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching Ask Profit. Now we are in the midst of uh, taking your queries, and the next one that I'm taking is from Mohit. He's writing in from Ludhiana, and he's asking about Fortis. He's bought at levels of 270 rupees per share, and he's got a time horizon of about two years. Avinash, what's the view on this particular account, and is this the best pick in the uh, in the healthcare space? I think see, hospital space has gathered a lot of momentum, and specifically specialty hospitals is one space where I think you are going to see a lot of traction going forward. Uh, Fortis definitely looks uh, positive. I think over the next two years, 
uh, we could expect not only the overall bed capacity to increase, but even the specialty business could contribute quite significantly. Plus, they have their diagnostic business, which uh, you know is expected to be uh, monetized in the next two years. So that itself is also going to give a leg up to Fortis. But I think uh, some other stocks within the hospital space we like is Alex Shalvi Hospitals. You know, this is also one company where a lot of good fund buying has happened. The company has been operating uh, hospitals, especially tertiary hospitals in tier two and tier three markets. Where I think uh, the risk reward could be significantly better. I think we've got good institutional as well as uh, HNI investors like Vijay Kedia also, uh, you know, buying a chip of the block here. So I think both these companies look interesting, provided the investment time frame is at least 12 to 18 months. Okay. Uh, we've got a question from Ramesh. He's writing in from Hyderabad. He's got Delta Corp at levels of 164, and he's got Lakshmi Organics that he's bought at levels of 364. Both he's experiencing losses in. He's got a long-term uh, time horizon, but should he average or book losses uh, uh, from the perspective of what the price movement is? Ayush, what's the view on the charts? Well, let's talk about Delta Corp first. Delta Corp has given a breakdown that in all the time frames, and we are seeing profit working from high levels. I feel uh, you should exit Delta. Uh, I mean, I mean, you should exit Delta Corp once it uh, gives a closing below one and five because that is the last support zone for this, this stock, and I feel hundred rupees can be seen in this stock also. And the next stock is the Organics, which he's bought at levels of three hundred and sixty-four. Uh, organic. That is LX Chem, right? Uh, that is uh, yes. It's currently trading at 235. So, Lakshmi Organic charts are a little positive right now. It has given a reversal from the 220 rupees level. And I think you should continue to hold this as there's a trading stop loss I would like to recommend here is 228. Once it uh, drops below 228, then you can exit. Otherwise, you should continue to hold it. And 250 will be seen very soon. In this. All right. Uh, the next question is quite interesting, not something that you hear every day. Uh, it's from Sham, and he's asking, should he switch from Reliance Industries to Geo Financial Services uh, from the perspective of the long term? Avinash, uh, you know, I think a lot of uh, questions I have had about Geo Financial Services and what the plan is with regard to the business, but uh, clearly the stock seems to have uh, no issues, or, or rather the market seems to have no issues about where things are going from the business perspective, the stock price has gone up quite substantially in the year-to-date period. Should a switch like this be contemplated, though? Yeah, I think, Alex, uh, Reliance Industries, first of all, is the parent of Geo Finance. And I think, you know, if the investor has purchased shares independently from the market, then it's a different thing. But otherwise, if he has been already holding Reliance shares, then I think most of the Reliance shareholders have got Geo shares free of cost. So my sense is now, if one were to buy Geo Finance and sell Reliance, uh, I would believe that would not be a wise decision because see, Reliance has got a more matured business model. Uh, not only does it have financial services as new business vertical, it's got telecom, retail, where a lot of value unlocking is going to happen in the next say two years. So I think you know, uh, Geo does well. Obviously, that will benefit Reliance first because it's going to get consolidated in Reliance numbers. And I think the tailwinds for Reliance are quite encouraging. I would not be surprised that next year could be a very strong year for Reliance, both from the telecom, retail, as well as from the geo financial side. Geo is still uh, maturing. It's still putting all the blocks in place. And I think probably in the next two years, you could see some material revenue and profits coming in from this business. So I think it's better to hold on to Reliance. Okay. Uh, torrent power is the question, or, or rather the stock that Uday Bhaskar uh, wants to know about. And He's bought at levels of 1350. Uh, any view on the charts, Ayush? What target would you give for this particular counter? My target power is performing really well, and it, uh, we are seeing a breakout on its weekly as well as monthly chart. So I feel the first target we are seeing here is 1525. Once that is seen, then 1600 levels are also on the card. Uh, if someone wants to put trading stop loss here, then 1375 is a trading, spot, uh, trading stop loss level. Okay. Uh, best agro life. Uh, I'm just trying to pull up the counter. Do you have a view on this, uh, Avinash? Uh, we've got a viewer who's Ravi Kumar who's asking about this. Is it the right time to buy this counter? I believe it's a pesticides company. Yeah, I think uh, Alex, uh, this is into agrochemicals, and I think like all agrochemical companies, you know, the last uh, six months have been extremely challenging for them. Uh, there's been a lot of inventory pile up in the system. I think fortunately now things are slightly better. And uh, hopefully next year, you know, when the season starts, I think all the agrochemical companies, including Best Agro, should do well. 
uh, we believe that this is not a global phenomenon it was largely uh, restricted to the indian markets and i think unless the investor has got at least the next 12 to 15 months time frame he can definitely consider buying a small quantity here because agrochemicals as a sector is a very crucial sector in the economy and hopefully next year monsoons are good and you know the season starts positively you could see a good bounce back in best agro so i think definitely for over the next 12 15 months it could be a good risk reward opportunity okay um i'm going to try and pull up uh, what uh, has been shared anuradha menin from mumbai is asking about artemis uh, medical i believe let's pull up that chart and see where it's currently trading and nelcast uh, i'm not too certain about what the levels are uh, but she's looking to hold these for the long term uh, so artemis is currently trading at 175 do you have a view on this uh, are you on the charts how does it look So Artemis charts are looking positive. It has given a, uh, it has made a formation of black pattern, and the breakout is awaited at one seventy six, one seventy seven, and which will happen maybe today or tomorrow. And I think Artemis Artemis should be uh, should be hold it for a short term. And the first the first target we are seeing here is one ninety. And next one is Nelco, right? Last. Nelco last one. So Nelco Nelco has formed a bottom at around one twenty, and this is in the range of one twenty to one thirty. Currently trading around one thirty two. So it should be holded as well. The first target we are seeing here is one forty-five. All right, first target is one forty-five, gentlemen. That brings us to the end of this particular edition of uh, Ask Profit. Uh, as always, as I mentioned at the start, it's a pleasure to have you on the program, viewers. I hope that this uh, benefited you. Even if we weren't able to take your specific question, we've discussed a number of stocks, and there's a lot of advice that was dispensed over the course of the last half an hour, and you can use all of that as well. That brings us to the end of this particular edition of Ask Profit. Do stay tuned. Lots more coming up over the course of the day, and this is NDTV Profit.
Hello and welcome. This is Hot Money. I am Agam Vakil and in this show we take you through all the stocks which are buzzing in trade and are the flavor of the season. But before that, quick look at the markets and at the moment we are looking at, uh, well, some advances for the benchmarks. Sure, the Nifty has advanced and in fact uh, the Nifty is 